so it, it's now live streaming in youtube uh prashant am i audible sir right here yeah you are completely audible Uh, so just uh, two minutes left. Uh, it will be okay. four, and we will start the uh, proceedings. Okay, surely. Uh, There is a gain out there. Yeah, but uh, mm. my audio, audio system is muted. Really uh, com uh, coming from someone else's Hello. audio. Actually, we can hear you clearly. No, no, no. We can hear you clearly. Yes, yes. Now it's not coming. But I guess uh, someone's audio is not muted, and uh, from that portion, uh, the sound is coming—a booming sound. Yeah. A booming sound is coming from someone else's uh, yeah, audio. Yeah, I don't. Uh, please uh, ask the participants in Jimmy to uh, mute their audio once the program is started. I think uh, all of them are muted except Shrita is uh, muted and our speaker is unmuted. So how uh, things are coming in Jimmy? Uh, I am not uh, stopping it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you just uh, put on the recording, Pranita. Uh, yeah. And I can start. So Shilajit, recording is getting started uh, within a few okay. moments. Uh, okay. You can start. Uh, let the recording start. Uh, it is taking you some give time. A, a, a yes, call after the recording has started. Okay. Actually, many participants are trying to enter the system. Actually, many participants are trying to enter the yeah. system. Therefore, it is getting longer so, time uh, to start. So, may I start? Uh, <coughs> hello. Yeah. Hello. May I start? No, recording hasn't started yet. Uh, actually, it is taking. A longer time because it, many participants are trying to join the gym. It's, it's showing out. It's, there. Showing, it's showing. It's, it's, it's getting recorded. Uh, yeah. it's showing the, out. It's showing it's recording. But but it's uh, in my screen it is still uh, moving. No it's no. Showing, it's, it's showing. showing it's showing it's recording. Ah uh, uh, now 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 it started. Okay okay okay. Okay okay. So start. So, so a uh, very good afternoon uh, to all our distinguished participants from different parts of uh, Spingal. Uh, different parts of India and uh, also outside India too. Resource person, uh, my fellow colleagues, research scholars, and uh, my dear students who had joined us both in Google Meet and uh, YouTube platform. I, Dr. Shilajit Borua, Assistant Professor of Department of Microbiology and Convener of the Research and Guidance Cell, Vijayga Jyotishtray College, welcome you all to the one day national level e workshop an awareness program on National Digital Library of India, jointly organized by Department of Library and Internal Quality Assurance Cell in collaboration with 
National Digital Library, IIT Kharagpur. Uh, we have been in a state of standstill for over uh, three months, rather four months. Now, conventional uh, classroom-based education and knowledge sharing has come to an halt throughout the world. Uh, however, uh, we are restarting major activities through various unlock phases. And under the so-called uh, neo-normal situation, knowledge sharing and teaching via digital methodologies have come into forefront. The Ministry of Human Resource Development, MHRD, under its national mission on education through information and communication technology, which is NMEICT, has initiated the National Digital Library of India, which is NDLI, uh, a project to develop a framework of a virtual repository of learning resources with a single window search facilities. Filtered and federated uh, searching is employed to facilitate focus searching so that learners can find out the right resources with at least uh, with uh, least effort and in minimum time. NDLI is designed to hold content of any language and provides interface supports for leading vernacular languages, currently Hindi, Bengali, and several other languages are available. It is designed to provide support for all academic levels, including researchers and long, uh, lifelong learners. All disciplines, all popular forms of access devices uh, and differently abled learners, it is being developed to help students to prepare for entrance and competitive examinations to enable people to learn and prepare from the best practices from all over the world and to facilitate researchers to perform interlinked explorations from multiple sources. It is being developed at Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. The National Digital Library of India, NDLI, is a uh, project under the Ministry of Human Resource Development, India. The objective is to collect and collate metadata and provide full text index from several national and international digital libraries, as well as other relevant sources. It is a digital repository counting textbooks, articles, videos, audiobooks, lectures, simulations, fiction, and all other uh, learning media. The NDLI provides free of cost access to many books in English and Indian languages. So there are nearly about uh, 50, 58, uh, uh, it's about a uh, million downloadable uh, e-resources. Uh, before moving to the actual session, I would uh, firstly request uh, Dr. Rajasri Niyogi, Principal Vijayagar Jodhish Rai College, whose constant inspiration has always been the stepping stone for us to carry out such informative webinars to deliver her welcome address. Uh, I welcome Madam to deliver your welcome address. Thank you, Dr. Borla. Uh, I am Dr. Rajasri Niyagi, Principal, Vijayagar Jyotishraya College. On behalf of Vijayagar Jyotishraya College, I would like to welcome all the participants and respectable today's speakers, Ms. Sujata Roy, Chief Operating Officer, NDLI, IIT Kharagpur, and Mr. Onigban Sharma, Chief International Outreach and Communication Officer, NDLI IIT Kharagpur. Uh, I'm really, we are really grateful uh, to these persons and especially NDLI IIT Kharagpur that they have kindly consented to uh, enrich us, ourselves and our students about the NDLI, National Digital Library. Actually, in this pandemic situation, uh, we don't have any uh, mindset uh, to study or something like that. Uh, so in this situation, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, our librarian, uh, uh, Mrs. Shudipta Shi, to organize such a very, very interesting webinar just to divert, uh, so that he can divert our mind from this gloomy pandemic situation uh, to the actual situation where we can study, where we can generate, where we can rejuvenate ourselves by uh, studying from National Digital Library. Not only, I think, I think in, in this perspective, not only it will help us to research, but also it will help us 
to rejuvenate ourselves by studying because most of her uh, most of us are involved uh, in this uh, field that uh, we are we need to study every day we need to improve ourselves every day uh, so what we have forgotten during last uh, three and a half months uh, but this webinar definitely remind us that what is our actual task we are teachers so actual task is to study to acquire knowledge to enrich our students so in this perspective the national digital library can help us immensely and we are really grateful to iit kharagpur that they are collaborating with us to deliver this meaningful webinar and once again i would like to congratulate ms sudipta shi our librarian he recent she recently joined but very active to organize such a webinar and also i would like to congratulate our team iqsc team and uh, especially uh, dr prashanjit dash dr shampa devnath and dr shilajit uh, borwa thank you and once again on behalf of bijayagar jyotishray college madam most welcome virtually to our institution uh, and uh, i have a request to you if if the world uh, becomes as usual what it was before march uh, so i would like to invite you please come to our institution physically uh, you will be happy to see us our institution thank you very much once again welcome you all i hope that this webinar will be a great success thank you uh thank you madam uh before going to the formal introduction of our speakers i have some announcements for our participants so i would request all of you to please uh, keep your uh, microphone in a mute mode so that it doesn't cause any disturbances during the course of the uh, uh, talk and secondly uh, during the session the feedback link would be uh, provided in the youtube uh, platform so please don't worry about the feedback forms it will be provided and i would be grateful if uh, speak uh, if the uh, listeners in the youtube platform they uh, uh, drop in questions uh, related to the subject related to our subject related to the subject of the lectures uh, so uh, it is my greatest pleasure now uh, to uh, welcome the our first keynote speaker ms uh, shujata roy uh mr roy is the uh, chief operating officer of the national digital library of india project executed by iit kharagpur her liaison with all external organizations to familiarize them uh with the objectives and uh, purpose of india like and guides and uh, works with them to bring them on board as a partner of india like mr roy is an alumnus of iit kharagpur and has spent Uh, most of her career in the corporate IT sector, working with various private and multinational organizations, uh, till she uh, finally retired from IBM as general manager. After retirement, she had been actively involved in IIT alumni activities and is uh, happy to be back to her alma mater through her role in NDLI. So I would uh, like to welcome uh, Ms. Roy uh, to deliver her speech. It's over to you, Madam. um thank you dr borua for the introduction um i really feel privileged to be here today uh, along with my colleague ani ban sharma um to be talking about national digital library of india uh, so i am really thankful for this to vijaygarh jyoti shree college and as dr niyogi mentioned with a special special thanks to shudipta shi who had really taken the initiative to set up the session and so we are here today uh, my uh, thanks to dr niyogi for making the time to be here at this session to dr borua and others and of course all the all the participants who made it a point to uh, join the session uh, i hope uh, i hope you will find the session useful uh, with this let me uh, set up my uh, presentation
can you all see the presentation yes yes we can see it now yeah okay good good so i think dr borua has already given a very very good uh, summary of what ngl is all about uh, so maybe just to take up some of the points that he mentioned uh, the national digital library of india is actually a project by our ministry of human resource development of government of india under its enemy ict mission for developing a virtual repository of learning resources that can be accessed through a single window facility obviously the objective is to allow any learner to find the resource that he or she is looking for with the minimum effort the shortest time and at no cost okay and also it should be applicable to everyone anyone and everyone uh, and the project was assigned has been assigned to iit kharagpur for its execution uh but why did we need it at all in the li you know there was an assessment that was carried out by mhrd and fiki in the year 2014 to determine the inf the physical infra infrastructure that we might need to educate our younger generation as you may be knowing uh, we are india is privileged to have a large percentage of our population at the young age and to leverage on this demographic dividend what can be done how can we educate them to bring them to a certain level so they are ready to go into the job market for that the government of mhrd was doing this assessment and you know what came out of that assessment we realized that there were a million people who were turning 18 every month and uh, to meet their educational requirements the educational divide india needed six universities and 270 colleges every month so so that's a tall order six universities and 270 colleges every month which is physically just not possible so it was needed that effective use of digital technology would be needed here to handle the situation and that's when the national digital library of india was thought of which can provide a disruptive innovation designed to overcome this challenge so mhrd therefore decided selected iit kharagpur for setting up this library which will be something of a repository which will be which can be accessed all across india for everyone now there are two basic principles on which ndli has been built up one is its inclusiveness and the other is openness inclusiveness means it should cater to everyone all kinds of uh, learners whether there is it's a school going student or a college goer a researcher or a lifelong learner everybody should be benefited from this okay then uh, it should cover all domains this is science engineering humanities law everything uh, it should have books in all languages then uh, people should be able to access it through the different vernaculars of india and um, and for and finally it should be also um can be should be used by even the differently able users so in a single word we say it should be all inclusive and then it needs to be open it should the access should be open free of cost and at any anywhere even at the remotest uh, corner of india somebody should be able to access it through a pc or a desktop or a mobile or a laptop or even a tablet Okay. and the, even the software is free uh, is developed on linux uh, we are using d space all of both all of these are downloadable downloadable free from the net um, so it's open it's free and the idea is to have a quality knowledge resource that can be used by anyone at any time from anywhere so given this motto what do we have in ndli 
it's a massive national and international uh, integration of learning resources. One of the largest digital repositories that we know of in the world in terms of its volume. It's a 24 by 7 open to all digital library. And when we are saying 24 by 7, we really mean it. Because over the last several years since it has been launched, for 99.99% of the time, it has, been, uh, it has been up and running. It did not break down at the time of COVID. Even Amphan could not break it down. We have the primary server is in, the, in IIT Kharagpur, and then we have a backup at, uh, at our Salt Lake Center of IIT Kharagpur. So between these two facilities, we have been able to keep it up and running almost round the clock over the last several years. So we can proudly say it's 24 by 7. It's a single window search browse facility. Okay. Uh, what we mean by this is, in fact, this was from one of the primary objectives uh, that we talked about at the beginning. If uh, you would like to, let's say, access a research paper from ISI, or maybe you want to look up uh, a write-up by Amutha Sen from Presidency Alumni Association. Or maybe you want to visit some of the Jugantor or Amrita Bajar, the last the, the, uh, the old issues from Center for Social Sciences uh, in Calcutta. You, instead of going to three different websites, you can simply log into NDLI and you can get access to all of them. So that is the biggest, biggest advantage. Through a single window, you can access everything all uh, from so many other organizations. It covers diverse academic and culture of heritage. So diverse, we say diverse academic means all domains. We talk about science, humanities, engineering, law, medicine, uh, management, all of, all of it is on it. But again, let me tell you, we, we are far from completion. What we see now, right now maybe is just the tip of the iceberg. We have a long way to go and many, many more contents to be integrated. Um, host multimedia contents. Okay, so and when we are talking about the contents, it's not just text or articles. We have video, we have audio, image, simulation. So when school students, for example, are looking up, uh, for example, some of the lab experiments that they want to do, they can go through that simulation, simulation, simulation or a video presentation on that. Um, similarly, um, everything, so all kinds of learning resources are, you, are, have been used to host the contents on NDLI. Indian language user interface. Okay, this is very important for a country like us in India, where we have a variety of culture, variety of languages, India itself has got 22 official languages and so many dialects. Okay. So, given that uh, we wanted each and every person from the remotest village also to access this, we we want that we have tried to develop the interface in all the vernaculars. So, right now we have it in English plus 10 vernaculars, and we are working on more of these so that people are comfortable and people can use it through a language, uh, through an interface that they're comfortable with. Facility available for institutes, organizations to disseminate e-contents, which are under their exclusive control. Okay, uh, let me explain this a little bit. When we talk about National Digital Library, it's not that we are creating another new library. Okay. We already have plenty of digital libraries, digital contents all around, uh, all over India um, and in different pockets. And so creating a new one will be simply reinventing the wheel. So what we have done here is <clears throat> we have integrated all these existing libraries and brought them under a single umbrella so that people can access each of these through this a single window. Okay, so it's actually all these institutes, all these organizations who have who have contributed towards building NDLI, they are the they are our what we call them are our partners. They are the content partners. So they also get the benefit of their contents, their research materials, 
being uh, disseminated to a large population through, uh, through NDLI, and users are also get, getting benefited by accessing contents from all these uh, sources through a single portal. And then we have, um, then there's this nationally licensed contents, again, can be accessed free through NDLI. Uh, while the focus of NDLI is on open and free access. So most of the sources who have contributed their materials, it's free, free. Now there are some sources <coughs> with which India, government of India has gone into a national licensing policy by which the, these contents are shared on NDLI. And if somebody accesses these contents by logging into NDLI, they get it free. Um, they can access it free, but if they want to directly access those from the site, it, they will have to subscribe to it. Some examples of this is the South Asia Archive uh, or uh, Shotujit Rays, uh, so the Shotujit Rays Society. Like, for example, we have Kheror Khata by Shotujit Rays. It's all available under this national licensing, where you can see all the movies that he has he has made, the the graphs. The, uh, the the framework of each of them in his own handwriting. He's drawn the, even the living room and the bedroom, where the, what the furniture should be like, what the dresses should be like. He has put comments in his own handwriting. It's really a treasure. And I am I will strongly recommend all of you to go into NTLI after this and visit this Kherot Khata or all other contents from uh, Swati Detroit uh, Society. Similarly, if you want to look up Mashid Boshumuti, Hindu Patrika, Gaur Prabha, you can visit South Asia Archive and then you can get all of this. So there is a, these are just an, uh, this is an action of what are some of the uh, features uh, included in NDLI. So in terms of the contents, um, for example, as I said, we cater to all different uh, kinds of students. For school goers, we have um, the school question, school books, textbooks of all the boards, West Bengal board, Punjab, Odisha, everybody, all the school textbooks, sample questions, model answers, and then also lecture slides, videos, class notes, and, and so on. Then for uh, researchers, for colleges, universities, we have the faculties, publications. Then we have dissertations and theses for MSc, PhD, Masters, undergraduate from various research project, projects, books, periodicals, ebooks, and so on and so forth. That will be handy for all researchers and university or college goers. And then we have from institutional and open contributions uh, where we have different data sets, we have manuscripts. Okay, if you would like to see, for example, uh, uh, something on Jainism. You go into Jainpedia, you will find the manuscripts in the original language all in there. Uh, you want to look at photographs um, and something from uh, uh, some, some tools, the manuscripts, all many of these are available on NDLI. Okay, metadata, the heart of NDLI. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Borua had mentioned about metadata, and most especially all those who are the library professionals, you would know about it. Um, let me uh, explain a little bit about this. Metadata is primarily the textual information relating to a content. For example, if we are talking about a book, the metadata would have, let's say, the title of the book, the author or authors of the book, the publisher, date of publication, language in which it has been uh, written, and so on and so forth. So this, ex this describes a book. Similarly, there can be different kinds of metadata to explain a manuscript or an audio or a, or a photograph and so on and so forth. And so what we do, NDLI, what NDLI does is that when we are talking about integrating contents from different institutions, we are not taking the actual contents from them. Okay, the actual contents remain with them. What we take is we just harvest the metadata. We store this metadata in our servers. We index them. And so that whenever there's a search request from a user, it runs them through this indexed index. And whenever there's a match, 
it will take them back to the original source site. So number one, the ownership is retained by the uh, source organization. There's no copyright violation. And the user is also user can see that, oh, this has come from ISI, or maybe this has come from Ramakrishna Mott, uh, Bellur Mott, Ramakrishna Mission, uh, Bellur Mott, or, no, or maybe from both institute. So they're aware of the, of the institution where the work has been done. If they have any queries, they can always go back to them. And we, and the institution gets its, uh, also gets their uh, contents disseminated or propagated to everyone. So this is, that's why metadata is very, very important to us, how we handle, how we display, how we do the search. It is therefore, is based the basic part of NDLI that constitutes the complete library. So in uniqueness and reach, it's a single window, multilingual search, as I'm, um, it covers the entire spe spectrum of learners from school goers to lifelong learners, all domains of education, can handle content of any language. Okay, so we can have language. In, in fact, right now we have more than 300 languages, contents in 300 different languages, which are already on NDLI. Indian language user interface that I mentioned, that you can browse it, uh, you can uh, browse through in Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi, Bengali, Bangla, and so on and so forth. Personalization, uh, you can. This is more of the uh, more of a service where you can actually get what you're looking for um, customized to your requirements. I'm sure Anirban will be talking more about this, so I will not go further into this. So right now we have 15,000 plus institutes who are with us in terms of sharing, in terms of participating uh, in NDLI. We have a user base of 30 lakhs plus. You know, and this user base, we've seen that it has gone up significantly during the uh, during the lockdown period for all the all the right reasons, and we get an average daily hit of about one lakh. We have more than 4.8 crores of items on NDLI, in more than 300 languages. Uh, there are 300 more than 300 sources who have shared their contents with us. And of course, we also have a regular share of recognitions where we got the, we were the winner of the James of Digital India 2019, and we were also the winner of the M Billionth South Asia Award in 2017. Now, as you get, get into NDLI, and when you try to access any item, you would see one of these signs in front of any of each of them. Uh, so it's, that's why it's important to know what they mean. If you have a, an open lock like this, which is very, I mean, understandable, this means that it's open. Full text is open access without any cost attached. Okay. For example, all the NCERT books. Then some of them would have a sign like this with NDL written on this. These are for our li nationally licensed uh, sources that I talked about. So here, if you have logged into NDLI and then trying to access it, you will get the full text access. Otherwise, you will. Uh, otherwise, if you're trying to go directly to the source, you will not get full text access. Then there are some of them which have a limited access where part of the text is available, and but full text will require an authorization by the source authority. Some will have a sign like this, which is subscribe. For example, uh, when you look at Springer publications, if your institute has contributed, uh, is, has subscribed to Springer, then you will get a full, full and free access to the Springer publications. But otherwise, you will have to subscribe to Springer to get a full access. And restricted, where full text access requires authorization by the source authority and a separate login to source. Now, uh, the, the thing is that even if you, like for the restricted ones, you can always look up the metadata for all of them so that you have a very good idea as to who was the, who, who's, who is the source, what is it all about, what is, um, you get to read the abstract of the, of the item. And then if you feel necessary, you can always access the, uh, approach the source for a full text access of this, of the item. 
So this is some of the just some numbers which show which will show you the percentage of uh, items that we have in uh, and the various access with the right various access options. So we have both 2.79 crores of items which are simply open and freely accessible, and another 77 lakhs which you can access again open and free by logging into NDLI as an NDLI user. So about more than 3.5 crore resources are open and free, of more than 75%. And rest of them, as I said, you may have to get a special permission. You can put in your email ID there, a window will open up. You can put in your email ID and the source might decide to send you the item directly into your email ID uh, for access. So all these are for educational because we are trying to promote educational and research uh, activities. This shows the, some of the uh, interfaces. Uh, right now, uh, this is the English one. And here, you can see there's a, a drop-down menu in here from where you can choose the language of your access. And you can choose Hindi, Bangla, Gujarati, and so on and so forth. Then you get NDLI in Bengali, in Marathi, or in Hindi. And similarly, the other vernaculars. So this is the landing page where you arrive at when you are using a web app on your desktop or laptop. And NDLI is also uh, available on mobile, both on iOS and Android. So this is the mobile uh, interface that you see as you log into, log into ND, uh, NDLI on a mobile. Okay. Now, uh, when during the lockdown, when the lockdown happened, what we saw is the, I mean, where virtual or online studies were the only mode of education for students, obviously, we saw a huge spike in the usage of NDLI. Uh, and then, so we made a special effort to bring, uh, to create a few verticals, three different verticals that will help students to easily access any doc, any uh, content that they're looking for. So right now, so when you get in, you will find one vertical is on study at home. So here we have a, uh, a button for school or CBSE. This was because CBSE exams were supposed to be held at the beginning of July. So we made a spe special button for their preparation. Then engineering, science, humanities, literature. <coughs> So the moment a school student clicks on the school button, he or she will get all the school board books, question papers, JE advanced papers, JE sample papers, solved questions, whatever they would need for a school preparation or lab simulation, lab experiments, everything from here. And similarly for the other buttons. Then, uh, because of COVID, we developed a new uh, a separate and independent vertical on COVID research repository, where we have scholarly publications, more than 40,000 scholarly publications, which are all from peer-reviewed journals, then data set, documents, videos, ideas and funding. What can be some of the funding resources from where you, uh, you can, uh, if you are interested, if you want to do further research, who can help all that information you can get from this vertical. And then uh, there's a third uh, vertical, and this is uh, this is very interesting, and this is one of my favorites, is the featured collections. Where uh, in the first one, you would see, for example, we would try to cover some somebody, some uh, special dignitary of the year. For example, this being the first centenary year of Sotogit Ray, we have a full set, full, full, a tab uh, where you can f find anything by him and on him. All documents, all uh, publications on him and by him, you can find through this. On this day, so every day this keeps changing. What had happened on this day so many years ago, you will find that interesting information. Person of the week, maybe some who, some person during this week, who has his birthday, maybe during this, for example, Gregor Mendel, he has his birthday on the 22nd of July. He's supposed to be the father of Jen and Jen and Wix. So uh, you'll find all his information, his publications, or publications on him from here. Then uh, something called the topic of the week, uh, of the week, International Chess Day, for example, that's the 20th of July, which falls during this week. So you'll get some information on that. So these are some, uh, very interesting things that you can look at every day, every week, 
uh, just for your knowledge sake and for your information sake. That's it. And uh, talks and webinars, some of the interesting talks and webinars, not all of them, but some you can find here for your own benefit. So that's uh, an overall glimpse of uh, the NDLI, how it works, what are the main features, the, uh, and then um, some of the interesting features, some of the important features and the work and what goes behind it. Uh, and this now I will hand over to my colleague uh, Anit Ban, who will take us through the portal to to go to look at some of the ways how how we can put it to the best use in terms of searching, searching, browsing, or arriving at any um, any particular item that we are looking at. So with this, uh, I hand it over to Anit Ban Sharma. All right, thank you very much, ma'am. Please allow me a moment to set up my uh, presentation and just share the screen. Sure. I think I will need the screen sharing uh, option now. Oh, you yes, say yes, sorry, uh, stop sharing. Yes, yes. Sorry, that's right. Thank you so much. Yes, please uh, just give me a moment. And... Sure. Okay, it's, it seems to, uh, just a moment. It seems to be uh, slipping away each time I uh, actually see it on my shared screen. Sami, I help you. Yes, could you? Uh, yeah, uh, there's a present uh, button in the right hand. Uh, yes, I know. Right. I click that and then I choose share window. Uh, I think it will be better if you ch choose the entire screen. Uh, there's an option, choose entire screen. Okay. No, entire uh, screen will show all of us. Uh, you need to select a window. Yeah, you need to select the window. Entire screen is not the thing you should select. Uh, put the presentation in screen. Yes, over it that, is in screen. Uh, over that, uh, open your uh, Gmit screen. Go to the present now button. Uh, yes, and just select that. the a window option. And a block will open. That you will see the yeah. PPT in a, a small scale. Select oh, right. it. Yes, done. I think I'm sharing now. Is this? Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's getting yeah. shared. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Thank you so much for the assistance, and uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Miss Roy, for the first part of the presentation. All right. Uh, that allows me to take it forward from there. Um, at the very outset, I'd like to thank our host organization, uh, Bijaygarh Jyotish Rai College and particularly its principal, Dr. Rajeshri Nyogi, and librarian, Ms. Shadip Tashi, for putting this event together. It's an absolute pleasure to be here, and thank you once again for having us. Uh, I must put in a special word of thanks to Ms. Shadip Tashi. It's been an absolute pleasure interacting with her over the last week, and uh, it's not very common to find somebody so enterprising and prompt in all her interactions with you, so thank you very much. Uh, now, so far, we've learned what the National Digital Library of India is and how it operates. And we also know a little about its contents, its internal infrastructure, and some of its features. Uh, my presentation is going to focus entirely on how to actually use the NDLI and how, as users, you can access content that is relevant to your subject and to your area of interest. All right. So this is the NDLI homepage or landing page. And uh, I'm going to run you through the search function in particular in quite some detail. But before that, 
I'd just like to say a couple of words about the users and contributors, people who actually use the NDLI and also contribute to it. All right. So as my colleague mentioned, the NDLI actually integrates content from a wide range of sources, contributing institutions. And these could be universities. They could be academic and research institutions. Uh, they could also include publishers, other digital libraries. And of late, we also have had quite a lot of teachers and professors who are beginning to contribute their individual teaching contents, all right, lecture slides, uh, lecture notes, etc. All of this is integrated in the central NDLI repository. And through that single window, you, as users, get to use this. All right, so that box in the top left is you. You are the teachers, the learners, the researchers, and the professionals who routinely access the content of the NDLI. And as my colleague mentioned, we actually have uh, more than 30 million users at the moment. So that's, uh, uh, well, rather 30 lakh users, active users, that comes to more than 3 million users. This screen gives you a snapshot of who some of our current uh, institutional contributors are. Now, one thing to make a note of is the NDLI uh, aggregates content from both Indian and international contributors, all right? Now, these are all very highly rated, globally recognized sources. They're extremely credible. So they're good things to refer to for educational content and research. And you will find that uh, most of India's top universities are represented here. For example, a number of the IITs and the IAMs. And you also have a large number of international contributors, all right? For example, the South Asia Archive, which Ms. Roy referred to several times. You have the OECD Digital Library and well-known publishers like uh, Springer and IEEE Explorer. Also lots of uh, international databases of journals. If you were to break down the content available in the NDLI according to discipline, you would find that we have uh, more than 20 million resources on the fields of computer science, technology, engineering, and related works. All right, so 20 million, that's a large figure. When it comes to the natural sciences and mathematics, uh, we have a little less than 8.5 million contents. And uh, if you were to take the arts, humanities, and social sciences together as a composite group, we have uh, just short of 7.3 million. Now, our host college, of course, uh, does include uh, an arts department and a science department. So I'm sure the natural sciences and the arts and humanities section is going to be of particular interest to you. Uh, this gives you an idea of the kinds of resources that we have in our repository. All right, you have articles, meaning journal articles. It could also be newspaper articles. Uh, lots of e-books. There are reports, technical reports, studies. There are lecture notes, lecture slides. You have the somewhat more uh, specialized documents like law acts, law judgments, etc., technical reports, and you have theses. We, uh, in fact, uh, the Shodganga repository, which many of you may be aware of, which is India's largest uh, collection of dissertations, is also fully accessible through the NDLI. There are also historical and cultural documents and lots of video lectures. So much of this is uh, extremely relevant for students, uh, and they're used pretty regularly. Uh, now I come to the core of my presentation, how to actually access the NDLI, right? When you do a Google search for the National Digital Library of India, the very first, first result that appears on the top of your screen leads you to our home page or our landing page, which you're already familiar with now. Let's go through the different components of this page, okay? Right in the center, you have the, the central search box. This is where you enter the terms that you want to search for. For example, I have entered Rabindranath Tagore, all right? Below that, you have the verticals that my colleague spoke about a few minutes ago. These are uh, new tabs which we introduced during the COVID period to enable students to study from home, to allow researchers to, well, look for solutions and research articles related to COVID-19 itself. And of course, there are the featured collections. I'm going to come back to some aspects of study at home a little later in my presentation. On the top right, you have the different languages in which you can access the NDLI interface. Now, this entire interface is viewable in English and 10 other uh, Indian languages. Uh, these 10 languages were chosen because they're actually the most widely used Indian languages. 
And on the extreme right uh, at the top, well, that's my name there. That's because I'm a registered user and I've logged in. Uh, when you log in, your name appears on the top right of the screen. And that, in fact, is the point with which I'm going to begin, how to log in and register yourselves. Uh, now, strictly speaking, registration is not necessary. You can actually look at a lot of contents and access them even without being a registered user. But uh, it is actually highly recommended that you register yourself because then there are quite a few additional benefits and there are a number of collections which would not have been accessible to you otherwise, which you can look at if you are a registered user. For example, that entire large bundle of nationally licensed contents, which my colleagues spoke about, uh, is accessible only if you are a registered user, right? So it probably is a good idea to log in and register yourself after all. How do you do that? Um, on the top right of the homepage, you find a login button, which I have outlined in red here. When you click on that, you will find a little screen like this, where essentially all you have to do is enter your email address and create a password, and then click on register. So. Uh, Really, the registration process is ex extremely simple, and anyone who has an email address can register and start using the website. When you click on register, you're going to be led to a registration form, which looks like this. And uh, as you can see, the details asked for are extremely basic. It's just your full name, your email address, a password, uh, your date of birth, and your state and city. That's pretty much it. And once you do that, you receive an email with an activation link. And when you click on that link, you are then a registered user, right? And you can log in each time you use the NDLI. Now, let's begin with the search process itself. Uh, on the home page, which I showed you a moment ago, you enter your search term in the central search box, all right? When you enter, let's say, to go, for example, this is how your search results are going to be displayed uh, in rows like this. So you can see a number of publications. These are all works related to Tagore. Uh, as you can see from the numbers, Tagore has generated 3,278 search results. So there's quite a lot of content on him. Now, what's important is how to filter your search and make it more and more focused, right? So on the left of your screen, you have one set of filters which is each of these green tabs, and I've outlined one of them in red. So you have different filters for access restriction, author, subject category, educational degree, difficulty level, file format, learning resource type, and so on. And I'm going to come to each of those in a minute. And on the right of your screen, you have a different set of filters. These are filters by content type, right? So you can choose the type of content that you want to look at. Do you want to look at text? Do you want to look at books? Or do you want an audio file? Do you want an audio book or an audio recording? Do you want videos about Tagore, et cetera? So this allows you to uh, filter your search by content type. Right. Now, if we were to um, click on access restriction, which I have done here, you find all the access options that my colleague mentioned a short while earlier, right? You have uh, the open access contents. You have the ones which are nationally licensed. And you have the other ones which are, well, uh, limited access or for which you need a paid subscription. Uh, as a rule of thumb, of course, it's best to always stick the first two, uh, the open access contents and the NDLI contents, because those are the ones to which you have full free and open access at all times, right? So those are the two that I've ticked, and that's something you should do when you use the library yourself. Let's move on to our next filter. Our next filter is author. Now, do note that when I searched, I searched for Tagore. I didn't search for Rabindranath Tagore, right? So you have a number of other members of Tagore's family whose works are also listed here. And you also have authors who have written about Tagore, right? So you can see those are all listed under author here. So you need to check the box that, uh, well, you know, check the author that you're actually looking for. In this case, it is Rabindranath Tagore that I wanted to search for. So I've checked that box. Right. Immediately, you get works related only to, I mean, works by Rabindranath Tagore and about him. If you look at the icon of every work, you see that uh, there is an open lock or an NDLI logo beside each of them. That means that, well, your access restriction, of course, is working. It means that you are looking only at those which are open access contents and those which are nationally licensed contents. Let's move on. 
Now, here I went with a different search term. I was looking for the history of English literature, right? If you were to search by subject category, I mean, it is logical to make your uh, search terms your language and literature and rhetoric, right? So those are the choices offered and those are the boxes I've ticked. And then immediately, once again, you get a, a, a list of search results here. Uh, this is what you get to look at. Similarly, moving down to our next filter, which is education level, uh, we did a search for construction techniques. Education level actually refers to the difficulty level, all right? Uh, are you looking for school level content or are you looking for UG and PG level content or, or something related to adult education or professional education? So once again, those checkboxes are mentioned here. And I wanted UG and PG level content on construction techniques, so that was what I checked. And once again, this is the list generated. I haven't gone into the next two in detail, which was uh, learning resource type and file format. But just to tell you broadly what those are, uh, learning resources refer to the specific type of resource you're looking for, okay? Is it a book, a periodical, an audio book, article, newspaper, case study, etc.? So once again, if you were to click on learning resource type, you would get a list of check boxes like that. And you would tick whether you're looking for a book or an audio book or whatever. And uh, you will get your list of search results accordingly. Uh, similarly, uh, there is an option for file format. You can actually search by file format also. Are you looking for PDF documents? Are you looking for HTML documents, audio files in the form of MP3s or MP4s, JPEGs of images, etc.? I've gone straight to the last filter, which is source. Now, when you click on source, um, the NDLI is going to list for you again in that checkbox format all the different institutions and organizations from which contents are available on the subject that you have searched for. In this case, I had searched for biochemistry. All right. Uh, many, many different sources were, were displayed here. But I chose Inflibnet Shodganga, which is India's uh, national repository for student dissertations and theses. Okay. I was looking for theses in particular which is why I choose Shodh Ganga. And as you can see, all the search results displayed are contents from Shodh Ganga itself. Right. Now, our next kind of search, I mean, you can also research your search, uh, refine your search, sorry, by using the filter on the right side of your screen, which is the content type. Okay? So I did a search for sociology. And then... I wanted not books and audio books, but I wanted videos. I wanted video lectures. I wanted other kinds of animated videos on the subject of sociology. So from the right, under content type, I chose video. And then your search results are entirely videos available within NDLI. And as you can see, even among videos, there are quite a lot of them. On sociology, we have uh, close to 500 uh, videos available. What's important, and this is how you can make your search more and more focused and sort of catered more to your particular need. Uh, it's important that you learn to search in combination, all right? You can, of course, make your search as broad as possible simply by uh, choosing NDLI and national license contacts under access restriction. But the idea is if you were to combine that, your access restriction with, let's say, subject category and also source, you get a much more focused list of search results, right? So here, for example, we have search for artificial intelligence. Under subject category, of course, I chose options like uh, technology and computer science. Under source, I chose MIT's open courseway. So I don't want other search results related to other institutions. I only want what MIT has on artificial intelligence, all of which, again, is available through the NDLA, right? So this is a way of narrowing your search uh, further. A second possible combination, and of course, there are many different combinations which you can use here, is to combine access restriction with content type, all right? So if I were to choose uh, the open access contents and the nationally licensed contacts, and on the right side, I choose video, once again, I will get uh, all the available videos on human physiology that the NDLI has in its contents, right? So that, in a nutshell, is how you use the different filters to narrow and focus your search. And it's a very, very powerful tool. I'm going to say a little more about that later. 
As I mentioned earlier, the homepage also includes the study at home tab, right? And these are uh, specially curated collections. These are collections that have been very specially put together, particularly to enable students to study at home, study from home during the COVID crisis, right? So we have different sections for school level education. Uh, there were students preparing for the CBSE board exams, right? So we created a whole section called the CBSE examination preparatory. And uh, for the UG and PG level, we have divided learning contents into these disciplines, engineering, science, humanities, literature, law and management, etc. Now, I'm going to look at science and humanities in particular, because uh, these are both departments included within Vijay or uh, Jyoti Shrey College, right, our hosts. So let's look at each of these in detail. If you were to click on that science tab, what you're going to get is a list of subjects, uh, you know, actual subjects under the science, right? So you have agriculture, you have mathematics, environmental science, nanotechnology, physics, chemistry, biology, etc. And if you were to click on each of these tabs, you would find a lot of books, notes, videos, lecture notes, all kinds of things belonging to both the UG and PG levels, right? So those of you studying in undergraduate and postgraduate colleges could actually make very good use of these collections. And these collections, mind you, have been made available, keeping in mind the different syllabi and curricula of the time, uh, keeping in mind different public examinations and uh, uh, university examinations. So these are very focused and targeted collections and very useful for students. The same applies to the humanities and social sciences tab. All right, if you were to click on the humanities tab, you would find a vast range of lectures, videos, books, notes on these subjects, history, geography, sociology, literature, political science, education. And I know that uh, our host college also has media and communications or mass communications is one of their subjects. That is also available uh, a little lower in the page. It doesn't show up in my screenshot here. So once again, very relevant material for you to study at home at a time when your actual physical libraries are not accessible to you or you cannot go and photocopy notes. You know, This is how you need to study from home. Now, I did uh, recommend logging in earlier, but of course, there may be situations where you have forgotten to log in or you may not have logged in and you were searching for content. Uh, in case you want to click on a search result, a particular book or video, uh, and you get this message, you know, which tells you that you actually need to log in to view this content, that's no problem at all. You can log in even at this stage. So once you get this message saying login, click on it. And once again, you're going to be redirected to that page I had showed you right at the beginning, which allows you to log in and register yourselves, right? So accessing content uh, even at this late stage is not a problem. So let's just briefly recapitulate all the different filters we've looked at, okay? This uh, refers to the filters which we looked at on the left side of our screen. We have filters by access restriction, author, subject category, educational degree, difficulty level, language, learning, and resource type. You've looked at all these. And on the right side of the screen, we had uh, the second set of filters, which was filters by content type where you can filter whether you want to look at text, presentations, audio, video, images, data sets, or animations, right? That covers the search function. Of course, you need to experiment with it yourself to get a better sense of how it works. Uh, as my colleague already mentioned, the NDLI, of course, is a website, uh, but it's also available as a mobile app. And the mobile app, uh, allows you all the same functionalities that the website has. So all these different search filters, tabs, etc., are available on the app as well. Uh, the app itself is available on the Android, uh, you know, on the Google Play Store or on the Apple Play Store, and also through Omen. So you can download this and access content from your phone anytime you want. Uh, this is what the interface looks like on your mobile phone. Of course, it looks a little different, but the functions are all exactly the same, right? So this, again, is something you need to download and experiment with. Now, how is NDLI different from Google? Because, of course, in principle, it does seem like a search engine also at times, right, based on what I have just told you. And 
it might seem, it might sound presumptuous to even have a slide like this called Google versus NDLI. Of course, this is not to imply at all that the two are in competition in any way. Of course, we are not. But, uh, you know, when you're searching for educational content in particular, the NDLI does, in fact, offer you certain advantages, all right? To begin with, it gives you very targeted, curated educational content. So if you were to do a search on Google, you would get thousands of random results. But the NDLI, on the other hand, actually presents very specific data and results from premium content sources, right? So it, it's not a, a smattering of different sources. It's actually very highly rated sources that you get content from when you're looking through the NDLI. The filter options, of course, are another major advantage. You can narrow your results down using the filter options in quite a big way. And uh, very importantly, one thing that Google does not allow you to do is to use filters based on content type, all right? But the NDLI actually allows you to look for video specifically or text specifically uh, or uh, you know audio files differently if you want. Finally, of course, the concept of national licensing is quite unique to the NDLI. Uh, these contents are normally paid. If you were to access them from their source websites, you probably won't, wouldn't be able to because these have to be subscribed for and paid for. But through the NDLI, you get to access it completely free. And of course, this feature does not apply to Google at all, right? So there are certain clear advantages in using the NDLI platform when you're looking for educational research content in particular. My last point has to do with uh, bulk registration for the National Digital Library. Now, of course, I talked about uh, individual registrations and logins at several, po at, at several points, but uh, you might want your entire institute to apply, uh, to, to subscribe to the NDLI, right? If you're a college librarian or a college principal, you might want the NDLI to become routinely available to all your students as a content source. How do you do this? Uh, for this, of course, we would like the librarian to act as the nodal person. And the librarian or the nodal person then sends a list of all the users of the institute, all the students, faculty members, etc., their email ID, their first name and last name in a CSV file. And I'm going to show you a sample of this. You need to send it to these email address. You will get an automated link very soon. Once you click on the link and your email, you need, well, you get to complete your registration, after which you are a registered user. Right. That is the bulk registration process. This is the list that your library needs to send to the NDLI. Okay. It's uh, a spreadsheet basically where you enter your email address, the first and surnames of uh, every person who needs to be registered. Once this bulk list is sent to the NDLI, we are going to send you uh, those customized emails, which you then use for activation. And that uh, brings me to the end of my presentation. So thank you very much. Um, you know, I'd just like to conclude by saying that, uh, of course, we are going to make these presentations available to you, all of you who have attended this session, so you can look through it at leisure and, well, get better acquainted with all the functions that we discussed. And uh, for those of you who are from other colleges, uh, other institutions, not just Bijaygar College, um, if you are interested in a similar session being run for your college, for your students to become familiar with the NDLI, do write to us. Our email addresses were there on the very first slide of my colleague's presentation. And uh, we could certainly consider, we'd be happy to consider trying to organize a similar session for you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for this wonderful uh, and robustly informative uh, uh, informations. Uh, it has been uh, uh, our uh, participants in uh, YouTube are showering with comments about their they are very helpful. Uh, this seminar has been very helpful to them. Though there are certain uh, questions from our uh, participants, uh, I would read uh, one by one all of them. Uh, the first question comes from uh, Rinita Bhaduri. She asks that, uh, how, uh, ma'am, could you tell us how to get access to this NDLI? Uh, I think uh, uh, Sir has already uh, explained that. Hello. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, we can, yeah. Sir has uh, already explained that how uh, it's. Uh, the next question: What are the ACS and RSC journals? 
available in NDI, NDL. The uh, SCS and RSC journals are whether they are available in NDL. Uh, Mr. Karti Gupta is asking about this. Okay. Uh, now, uh, sir, would you uh, answer them one by one, or uh, I'll. Okay, uh, ma'am, would you like to take that one about the journals? Yeah, yeah. See, uh, the specific the the ones that yeah. are on NDLI, those are actually shared by the publishers or the journals. Now, some of the journals which have which are on a commercial mode, uh, obviously for the right reason, they they are not available on NDLI. So um, there are several of them which are who have shared their free access in here. Um, the, the, the one, the two that you have just mentioned, I really have to look up on this. Most probably they are not in there. Okay. Uh, uh, the same, uh, uh, Mr. Kartik Gupta is also asking that, uh, do we get world-based sellers in NDL? Do we get, sorry, once again, please? Uh, uh, world-based world sellers. Best sellers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bestsellers in India. Worldwide bestsellers. Um, okay. Again, the worldwide uh, bestsellers, <laughs> these are again all commercial ones, right? They are on Amazon, they are available on uh, uh, in bookstores. So you, this is something you have to remember. We cannot cross that path and we cannot put up these books which are on a commercial, uh, commercially available. We cannot put them up on India Life. Uh, because they are all copyrighted, copyrighted by the publishers, and if you do that, they, there will be a violation of copyright. So only copyright-free ones, where the publishers have actually shared them with us, they are the ones which are available on NDLI. Anyone would you like to add to that? Uh, no, no, that that's, uh, sums it up. I mean, I would just add that, uh, of course, you have lots of popular bestsellers from an earlier time, all right, which are... Only known as classics. These, of course, are out of copyright. Contemporary commercial bestsellers on NDLI, mm -hmm. right? So, yes, we okay. can move on to the uh, next question. Yeah. Uh, the next question uh, is from Mr. Parto Sharoti Choudhury. Uh, he's, uh, according to him, I have got an account to NDLI, but how can I get access to Bengali old newspapers like Doinik Boshumoti or others? So he's yeah. asking about. Okay, Doini Boshumuti, you get into South Asia archive, you will get there, uh, the, um, uh, not Doini, there's Mashik Boshumuti in there, there's Gold Prabha, there's Hindu Potrika. Uh, the, the daily ones are not available. Uh, similarly, if you want to get into the old uh, daily versions of Amrita Baja, Jugantor, those you can get into, uh, get in uh, Center for so Studies in Social Sciences, Kolkata, CSSC. So this thing is he, he just needs to search by that item, item name, and it will take them to the right source where it is available. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next question is from uh, Ms. Tonushri De. Uh, she's asking, is NDL free for students in pandemic situation? NDL well, yes. is free NDL is for free. everyone, Absolutely. everywhere, not only students, and <laughs> any time, pandemic, non-pandemic. Yeah. That is the basic idea to let people access do carry on with their studies from anywhere, anytime. Uh, you know, both of us did talk in some detail about the study at home tab, right? I mean, the whole purpose behind that service, which is a relatively new service, is to allow people to access all this content for free and study from home. And uh, you know, for those participants who have joined us from outside India, uh, all of this is accessible to you. And Anywhere that you might be in the world, all right? So, I mean, we did hear that uh, there were some participants from certain African countries, for example. All of this is readily available to you as well. So, the NDL is, is, is an open platform. It's accessible to all. So, uh, Thank you, sir. The, uh, the next yeah. uh, question goes from Mr. A. Pine. Uh, he asks, it is possible to access journals like American Economic Review, Economica, from National Digital Library websites? Mm. Uh, well, yes. I mean, you can, uh, I don't know about these two journals in particular, but the, the like I, like we both mentioned, you know, I mean, the 
NDLI does have offer you access to a lot of international journals, a lot of open access journals and others. So you would just need to search the platform, all right? Do a search for the particular particular journal that you're looking for and see if it's available. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. Ma'am, would you yeah. just say anything uh, to be added? No, I think that, that's absolutely fine. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank right. you ma'am. Uh, so, um, Ms. Donostride is asking that there are so many digital libraries. Uh, how is NDLI different from them? Anirban, I think Anirban has covered it very well. That uh, Anirban, you want to take it? No, I think you. Why don't Why don't you uh, begin? I can perhaps add to it if you like. Yeah, okay. So number one, he has given one example of how is NDLI different from Google. Okay. Uh, similarly, um, I mean, I guess it applies to all other libraries as well. Uh, and now this is, I mean, anything that has to do with knowledge, education, okay, that will go into NDLI. You should not, for example, in Google, I know we can, we can search for anything. Uh, something to do with, with a movie, who was actor or actress for a movie. Uh, those kind of elements are not available in, in India, in NDLI. But educational knowledge, research for all this, these uh, materials will be here. And the difference here is you get them, uh, um, you have access to so many uh, materials from so many different academic institutions through a single portal. That is the biggest advantage. You go into Digital Library of India, DLI, or any other, you will get materials only that are held by them, that are developed by them. But here, through a single window, you have access to materials from 300, 400 institutions uh, uh, and their research publications. Plus, uh, what uh, Anirban has mentioned that you can, it is, it is not just a repository that we are providing, it's more of a service. In the sense that first you uh, you can you uh, you can decide on the level that you're looking for. Are you looking for a class nine to ten? If you're looking for electricity, it's taught in class four, it's taught in class ten, it is taught in the undergraduate level. So you can choose. Okay, you want at the undergraduate level in this language, in text or video. Difficulty level could be uh, simple, medium, complex. So with all this, you really get a customized delivery on your on your screen that is the biggest advantage of india okay. thank you ma'am thank you, you know sir. if i might just add one question. minor point to that okay, uh, okay. Uh, shall i just add a minor point um uh, sure. you sure. see th there are a lot of national libraries a lot of national libraries in the world which offer a digital service among its other more conventional services all right so even the national library of india for example has a small e-library section among everything else it does but it's actually relatively rare to have a national digital library of a country as a standalone entity all right so that alone is something you need to sort of keep in mind and there again do look at do consider the the range of materials you have access to here we are, we are covering education at all levels digital libraries tend to be a little more focused all right i mean leading american universities have digital libraries uh, you have certain digital libraries which focus completely on cultural heritage, for example, like Europeana, which is a European digital library, looks only at cultural heritage. But uh, in the larger context, it is relatively somewhat rare to have an entity like the National Digital Library of India, which is both a national entity and looks at education at all levels. All right, so that is one major respect in which this is somewhat different from other existing digital libraries. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, the next question goes from Ms. Sonjita Sen. Uh, she's asking, it is possible to access Indian statistics through NDLI. Can these data be accessed free by students? This is important because students may not be able to afford subscription. So whether it is free for the students, she's asking. Indian statistics. Indian statistics. Well, yes. I mean, is she referring to data sets, basically? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Uh, she's uh, saying saying that uh, can these data be accessed free by students? Means uh, the statistical data. Yes, uh, yes. I mean, 
But there are certain data sets, yes, definitely, which are available uh, as open access on NDLI. So, um, you know, I mean, it really depends on your search terms and what you are searching for specifically. You have to try out a search and see if it is available or not. But yes, the NDLI does include a lot of statistical data and data sets. Okay. Uh, the next question uh, goes from uh, Mr. Obhijit Bhattacharya. He's asking that how much cost is required for digitalization of a library? <laughs> okay, that's a big question. <laughs> this really depends, number one, on the volume uh, that you have. And, okay, number one, when you're talking about digitization of library, means are you saying all the hard copy books that you have, physical books, are you looking at scanning and digitizing those? Uh, uh, he is not. He has not made clear. Probably uh, uh, both of them means uh, doing that and uh, accessing all the NDLI also. I think it's a big issue. Accessing NDLI. Yeah, both of them. No, accessing NDLI doesn't have any cost. Cost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, uh, that's completely open. and when we are talking about integrating your materials, uh, anybody's contributions, we are not talking, we are generally talking about the creations or the original publications of a particular school or college. We are not talking about library books. Uh, you can't scan them and uh, put them up on, N on NDLI because that will be a straight away a copyright violation. So, uh, so I don't know, I mean, um, when he's talking about um, um, digitizing a library, uh, I'm, I'm really not sure what he means. Uh, okay, uh, so better, uh, I think uh, our uh, uh, viewer must contact you directly regarding all yeah, this. Sure. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. We can sure, yes. offline and discuss. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Tintin Mukherjee is uh, asking whether how can students of ISC board get benefited from India? See, there are school books. All NCERT books are there on uh, NDLI. So, uh, along with that, there are uh, lab labs. Then there are certain <clears throat> sites which help them, for example, uh, STEM EZ, then there's exam fear, which actually solves the various problems that are there uh, in the textbooks. They will show how to solve it and all that. So all of this together will help uh, ICSC or CBSE, anybody, um, uh, all board uh, students. Thank you, ma'am. And the next question goes from Mr. Hamid Iqbal. He's asking that, is there an initiative taken by Government of India to digitize rare books in, digi in good digital format? Um, see, there are certain organizations, for example, the India Gandhi Institute, of, they, do, do, yeah, they do these kinds of things. They archive rare books and store them. Uh, so yes, there are initiatives. Uh, that government of India is taking to retain our uh, rare books and our heritage collections. Would you like to add to that, Anirman? No, yes, you're absolutely right. You know, there are uh, the, there is no single repository where uh, all Indian cultural heritage material can be found together. But there are lots of different institutions across the country doing this kind of work, all right? Uh, of course, the Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts IGNCA in Delhi is a major one. Mm. But, uh, you know, even the National Archives of India has done a lot of digitization work. And very recently, for example, they made the, the entire Netaji uh, paper collection, okay, the collection of Netaji related papers available in digitized form. Uh, similarly, there are lots of universities which have very good digitization programs uh, attached to them. And, uh, you know, the NDLI itself is doing some digitization work in, in collaboration with some of these institutions, but uh, it's not yet all in one place in the way that you're asking. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the next question goes from Dr. Amit Mojumdar. He's asking that 
Are you planning for including corporate databases, which will be really helpful for researchers? Um, I mean, it all depends on uh, number one, will the corporates, are they ready to share the databases? Okay, because obviously, you know, there's a lot of confidentiality, exclusivity uh, of the work that they are doing in research. So, yes, if anybody is uh, ready to share the database, NDLI will be more than happy to integrate those on the platform. Uh, right now, we are not really looking, uh, looking at uh, that at the moment. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, the next question goes from Mr. Hamid Iqbal. Uh, he's asking, as a researcher of social science, we need newspaper clippings. Mm -hmm. Uh, for our research purpose. So there is a need for a separate repository for paper clippings. What are your views in this regard? Uh. Yeah, so uh, send this, the source on Center for Studies in Social Sciences, Kolkata, CCCC, that will be a, 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 a source that they can use where they can find a lot of these newspaper clippings um, Amrita Raja, Jugantur, then uh, Mukti Potrika, um, and many more to come. Um, that's one area where that can they, they can benefit it from it. Another one would be uh, South Asia Archive. There also they'll get a lot of our old stuff, old rare books, uh, rare newspapers, uh, cuttings, uh, clippings uh, that they need. They can find it from there. Uh, these are two sources that I can think of offhand uh, where, where you can get old newspaper cuttings and clippings, rare uh, ones. Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next question goes from uh, Mr. Mono Choudhury. Uh, he's asking, Sir, my, uh, I just want to know, uh, can we access DVD data, audiovisuals, videos through digital library? Uh, well, yes, there are a lot of videos and, uh, uh, you know, audio uh, audio material and video material. But I'm not sure what, what, uh, what is meant by DVD uh, material, all right? But yes, I mean, of course, like I mentioned, uh, you can actually search, filter your search by video or by audio. So you will have access to a, a lot of videos of different kinds, audio books, audio recordings, all kinds of things. Yes. Okay. Uh, I also did talk about filtering your search by by you know the file type. So if you were to search by uh, you know MP3s or MP4s, of course you will. That's another way of identifying a lot of the sound and uh, visual files that we have in our archives. Uh, thank you, sir. The next question yeah. goes uh, from Mr. Nilanjun Shah. He's asking that is the con <coughs> are the contents are copyright proof? so that they can use audio and video for making further videos. See, for all the contents that we have on NDLI, the copyright rules, the printing uh, or uh, copying them, uh, these are all determined by the source organization. As we mentioned, in each of these, none of these are NDLI's properties. They have shared and generally they are all copyright free. So. If you, uh, whenever you get into an item, uh, check on the, that item itself or that source itself will tell you whether you, you can copy it, whether you can print. Generally, it is downloadable and printed. Uh, you can do a print as well. But whether you can make copies or you can whether you can use them in other publications, all that will be explained there itself by the source organization. So each of these items are all dictated or, de or decided by the source that is that is you know, created that organization and that particular item. There's no one hard and fast rule across all contents, mm -hmm. across all the sources. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next question goes from Mr. Uh, Vinash Tripathi. Uh, he's asking that our school has applied for NDLI club registration about 20 days ago. So oh. we didn't get the registration certificate. Uh, how means uh, he's asking how much time will it take? Generally it takes. Uh, sir, 
Hello. Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Roy, may I request you to take this question? Okay. Uh, because Ms. I am not very involved with the clubs myself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the club registration, uh, uh, can you... Can you tell me who he has sent the uh, uh, application uh, request to? Uh, Mr. Vinash Tripathi, uh, 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 he has said that our school is applied for NDLI club registration about 20 days ago. We didn't get the registration certificate. I think uh, Mr. Tripathi should personally uh, contact you about yes, other think... details. Yes. About, yes, uh, about right, various yeah. details. Yes. Okay, because you need that. some basic data to uh, track uh, his yes. registration. Right. right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the next question is from Mr. Partho Sharadi Choudhury is asking, is it possible to create free download options of any books from NDLI? Yes, yes. Yes, actually a lot of these books are uh, downloadable as PDFs, all right? So all the books that we talked about uh, as being open access or, uh, you know, being nationally licensed, these are all available for download. Okay. Uh, so the next question goes uh, from uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Tintin Mukherjee, I think. Uh, can NDLI, NDLI be used uh, by schools? Do they have to pay any uh, subscription? No, uh, NDLI is definitely targeted at students and therefore all students, all schools are most welcome to use it. There's absolutely no fees associated with the use of NDLI. It is free access, open access to everyone. So they're most welcome to use it. And so the ma'am, uh, the last question goes from uh, Mr. Uh, Judhishthira Muduli. He's asking, is special planning of government of india for implementation of digitization of the state libraries for each and every state of india uh, so, i mean is it a question that whether government of india has such a plan yeah about uh, digitizing the state libraries in okay. different states. i mean i guess we are not the right persons to answer that but I know there are several state libraries, for example, <laughs> first state library. They, they they already have a digital library which, which they have shared with us as well. But whether all the states have a state library which is digitized and all, uh, I, I'm afraid I don't think we are not the right persons to uh, to answer that. Okay. Uh, there is another question going last one, which is, uh, sir, how can I digitize my library books through NDLI? It's from Newton Kabiraj. Uh, he's asking, uh, how can I, how can he digitize his library books through NDLI? And how, I, I think he wants out there. Is it possible? No. What does he mean by uh, how can I digitize my library books? I mean, he wants to make soft copies out of the physical books that he has in his library. Uh, I think so, and he wants to deposit it at India, like probably. No, 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 no. Okay. No. It, yes. it, as I've mentioned already, the books that they have bought as a library, okay, they have actually spent, um, they have paid money for that, and that is that. So that's a some some kind of a contract between the library and the uh, seller. 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 So he cannot put it, just digitize it or scan it and put it up on an NDLI. Okay, I think this is something everybody needs to understand. We cannot just yeah. go uh, scan all the books in a library and put them up NDLI. That's a major, major violation of copyright. If yeah. they have digital materials that they have prepared, it can be school, uh, it can be course materials, teaching, uh, teaching. Uh, the teachers, the um, course materials that they use, presentations that they use, question papers of the school, uh, or are there any other research material that, is, uh, that an institute has uh, created? Those are the ones which are their original uh, contribution. They are the ones that can be uh, integrated with NDLI. Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful interactive session and the wonderful uh, lecture that you have provided today uh, we have uh...
come to the end of the uh, this uh, webinar today at the towards the end and uh, i thank uh, i i really thank you both from uh, all the faculty members and the fraternities of vijayagar jyoti strike college for this wonderful and informative talk uh, so next i would uh, request uh, dr prashanjit dash uh joint uh, coordinator of iqac vijayagar district college to deliver the uh, vote of thanks and uh, dr dash it's over to you uh, uh, thanks shilajit uh, this is uh, dr prashanjit dash uh, internal quality assurance cell joint coordinator vijayagar district college uh, on behalf of the iqac and department of uh, library i would like to congratulate our speakers for today's webinar uh, sujata roy madam and mr anirban sharma for uh, sparing a few hours from their busy schedule to be with us and discussing many uh, informations about the uses of ndli uh, how we can use that in this uh, time uh, how can we get the resources Uh, from our home uh, that was outstanding the presentation was outstanding we know we come to know about many things about india life and it is a great initiative i must say uh, next uh, thanks definitely we'll go to our principal madam for encouraging us to organize such webinars time to time and uh, uh, thanks to shilajit borua dr shilajit borua for anchoring this webinar and uh, no word is enough for uh, sudipta uh, the librarian of our college who uh, have planned who has planned this whole thing and i must uh, congratulate the audience also as they uh, actively participated and asked many questions Uh, to the speakers and uh, speakers have uh, responded to most of their questions and so this this, this was an uh, outstanding webinar in that respect uh, feedback link is already given uh, in the youtube chat box uh, participants can avail that only after the uh, this this uh, webinar is over and uh, once again i would uh, like to congratulate the participants as well as the speaker uh, speakers for this wonderful session uh, thanks to all uh, now it's over to shilajit uh, thank you dr das uh, for your wonderful vote of thanks uh, so we have come to the end uh, of today's webinar it has been a wonderful uh, about one and half hours of informations uh, we have tipped from uh, eminent personalities from ndli uh, i would uh, like to thank both of our resource person in this regard uh, and uh, lastly uh, next i would like to thank uh, our uh, librarian ms sudipta shi for uh, her wonderful effort uh, and lastly i would like to thank all of you for your patient hearing don't forget to uh, drop your feedback in the link provided and once again thank you all and uh, we ca- we has come to the end of thank the session thank you very much thank you so before we close dr borua uh, i would also like to mention that both of us are so pleased to be here today uh, delighted, to be yes. talking about ndli to all of you and we are always available uh, anytime even after this any time anybody has a query or whatever please feel free free to reach out to us uh, and this presentation will be shared that oniban has mentioned already it will be shared with all of you um, um, after after this session so you will have access to also the information that was shared with you today but thank you very much for uh, for having us here uh, with you today thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you very thank much you. thank you so uh, now the session is over okay okay all right thank you sure thank you